Hello again, welcome back to another day of daily Bible study. We're continuing on with the gospel according to Matthew. We're in chapter 26, and we're going to pick up today on in verse 6 and uh, read a fascinating story about the, the about the, the ointment that is applied to Jesus. Before we let's pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you that we have this story. Lord Jesus says that this story will always be told. So Lord, uh, it is clearly significant. Lord, if we do not see the significance, help us to see it. Uh, Lord, help us to remember that even the things that we, may seem to be relatively unimportant can ripple throughout history. Lord, send your Holy Spirit as we continue to unpack your word together. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we pick up here in verse 6, and we read, Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. But the disciples were indignant when they saw this and said, Why this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you bother the woman? For she has done a good deed to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. So I think I told the story um, you know, when we looked at a parallel account of this, but it always sticks with me. And I can't, I can't hardly read this passage without thinking about it because it was such a, 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 an interesting moment in my own life. I was in what's called licensing school, and I was down in Missouri. And uh, in doing so, we had to preach a sermon. We were assigned texts, and mine was on um, this text or one of its parallels. I don't remember which one. But in any case, this story is shared in at least several, if not all of them. And, um, and in doing this, uh, I, I used the example, I, I said one thing that really irritated um, uh, a student, a fellow student, and one thing that really irritated uh, the facilitator. And uh, the thing I said that irritated the student was I was trying to compare uh, this, this idea of somebody who gave, you know, a, a gigantic uh, memorial in, in their death, you know, bequest to the church. And it was, but the, it was only allowed to be used for um, the the, uh, the the oil to be used in candles. And uh, another student said, "Well, that's not. You shouldn't say that because now what you've done is, you know, well, if I was thinking about doing that now, I've been shamed." Um, I don't know. I think I thought I gave the example because I thought it was such um, an overwhelmingly obvious example of, of overkill for that. But then again, maybe I'm not necessarily putting my whole value on that. But one of the things I did was uh, I also, so I, I, I think about how I also uh, made a comment, I was drawing on other Gospels. And I had what my New Testament professor in seminary later on would call the Gospel blur. And I was saying, well, here's the thing. Uh, and in a different Gospel account, uh, Judas complains about it. And it says specifically, he didn't really care about that. Uh, he just liked to, to steal from the money that was given, that would have otherwise been given to the poor. Um, and, and so, I, you know, the, the, the fair point is that Matthew does not make that point. And so if we're talking about what Matthew is saying in this story, uh, we have to be clear about the fact that Matthew is not saying that Judas wants to steal from the purse because Matthew does not tell us that. So the purpose of Matthew telling us this story cannot be that, um, that the story is for that. Just the same way that the Feet of the 5,000, uh, for at least some of the gospel accounts, cannot be that there was a young boy you know, who would encourage people to give from their hearts because for some of their tellings, there is no young boy with those things. Um, but one of the comments that was made to me was, um, you know, I had made the comment that, that Jesus was in, indicting um, the church, you know, and it was, was saying, you know, um, don't use the poor as an excuse because uh, you, you should, you should be dealing, you know, giving to the poor. And I use the argument that this passage is telling us today that we should be caring for the poor. And the facilitator, um, who would definitely be more of someone who identified as being part of a, a, a very strongly pro-social justice perspective than I am, although I'm not anti it, um, they uh, well, made the comment to the effect of, I think that that's a major biblical theme. I don't think it's in this passage. And they thought it was inappropriate eisegesis to, to make it part of this. But I, so I can't hardly talk about this kind of passage without bringing this up because I had another student uh, who just was, was, was furious on my behalf and who went to great lengths to try to, to prove it. In fact, they found a commentary that made the similar point. And, uh, and the facilitator said, if you, if you had found that ahead of time and could point to that as part of your preparation, then it would have been fine, which of course just drove me nuts because how does bad theology become good theology or bad interpretation become good interpretation just because somebody else did it first? Um, maybe responsible or irresponsible, but not necessarily good or bad. Um, but in any case, what I find fascinating is this idea is you always have the poor with you. 
right? Why was this waste? Uh, you always had the poor with you. And it's fascinating because my Bible here usually has uh, small caps for things that are referenced to the Old Testament. Uh, but there really is a reference to the Old Testament in, um, in Deuteronomy, I want to say. Yeah, Deuteronomy 15, 11. It has a footnote to it where uh, the whole point in that passage is saying you always have the poor. The poor will always be in your land. Uh, therefore, there's always an excuse to help. And it's in the same context, within a chapter anyway, of God telling the people that, in fact, um, you know, there's so much blessing in store for you. There are going to be so many resources available for you uh, that you really ought, that there really ought to be no poor people in the land. You know, that there really is enough for everybody. Um, and so this idea of that, even in Deuteronomy, at least, there's definitely a critique of the use of money. So, but in any case, the, the more, here's a woman who has given what well, might be her dowry. You know, she might be giving up her opportunity to be married, basically, or at least married to anybody with any, with any wealth or, or status. So it's a massive giving up of status. It's also, you know, uh, definitely seen as being um, anointing for burial. Now, now, yeah, so Jesus does actually explicitly say is to prepare him for burial, which must have made his disciples extremely uncomfortable. Um, it's one of these things where there's a lot going on here from an interpersonal and a social perspective. And there's a lot of layers that um, that I think is a place where, again, like I said, my professor called the gospel blur can sneak in because there's so many little details and no one telling of the story has all of them. And so I think we have to be very careful to be aware of what, what Matthew is saying and what Matthew isn't saying and making sure we don't put all of our weight on something that he's literally not saying. Uh, but in any case, you know, I, I think it's fascinating to see that Jesus very clearly sees this uh, as, as a connection with his death, uh, which, again, I think is really something that's going to irritate his disciples in a big way. Well, that's all for today. Come back in tomorrow. We'll have one more day of daily Bible study. Have a good day.